going to wait a few minutes to let everybody arrive. I'm really excited for today's presentation, um, but for now, we're just going to wait so that um, everybody who's going to be here can show up, and then we'll, we'll, we will launch officially into the presentation. Um, you are welcome to say hello in the chat. It should be enabled for everyone. Um, feel free to say where you're from. It's always nice to see where our attendees are around the world. Hi, Linda and Stephanie and Robin. Hello, everybody. It's good to see your names. Uh, I'm in Toronto, where it's starting to feel like spring. We'll see if that lasts or not, but it's nice to hear the birds singing outside. Um, wow, it's wonderful to see everyone here today. It looks like we have very good attendance for today's presentation. Um, so I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to it. I've wanted to have a, um, a presentation from a publicist for a long time, and I feel very fortunate today to be able to do that and present present this to you. Um, yeah, so thank you for being here, and um, we're going to get started in another minute. We're just waiting a little bit to give everyone the chance to show up for everybody who will be here. Um, Again, you're welcome to say hello in the chat. Yeah, it looks like we have over 700 people here, actually 800 people here so far and we're on the way. So that's, that's, it's wonderful to see such a large audience here today. People from around the world, the UK, Gibraltar, South Africa, Italy, Missouri, New York, Maryland. I was born in Maryland, but did not live there for more than a few months. <laughs> Hello in Ohio, in Georgia, and Massachusetts, and New Mexico. Hi in Toronto. Um, just about ready to get started. So um, we'll just wait a little bit longer. Um, after Isabella's presentation, there will be a Q&A, and um, we're going to get more questions than I can answer because there's so many people here, but um, I will be looking at the Q&A feature for your questions. Um, my name is, I'm Jacob. Um, someone asked, I am indeed Jacob. I'm Jacob Jans. Um, so I think it's just about time to get started. So um, let me pull up my notes. And we will get started. Hello, writers. Welcome. This is Jacob Jans with the Writers Workshop at Authors Publish. Today, I'm pleased to introduce Isabella Nugent, who will be giving a talk on book publicity based on her experience working as a publicist for a major publishing company. Isabella is a senior publicist at Blackstone Publishing, where she manages publicity campaigns for best-selling authors and celebrity clients. Isabella also writes in her free time, and her work has appeared in Your Impossible Voice and Bridge 8 Press. Uh, thank you so much for being here today, Isabella. I know that publicists are almost always quite busy, so I very much appreciate your time. Welcome. How are you? Of course, I'm doing good. I'm really excited to be here today, Jacob. Yeah, I'm very, very much looking forward to your presentation and learning on just for my own sake as well. So I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I'm excited to dive in. And so throughout this presentation, I'm just going to share my insights on how you can work with your, bub your publicist to tap into your communities and find the right readers for your books. So I'm going to share my presentation. And then after I'm done, I think it's going to move over to a Q&A portion where I can answer any questions you might have about book publicity. So I'm just going to share my screen. Yeah, thank you. And also, everybody should know we're going to be sending out the slides um, after after the presentation. So you, you'll be able to use that for your notes as well. Yes, yes. Um, so let's dive in. 
So we're just going to start off with uh, the easy question, what is book publicity? In short, book publicity is the communication of your book and your brand as an author to the public. Publicists are responsible for generating awareness for your books to readers and people in the industry with the hopes that awareness translates to more book sales. Um, publicists are part strategizers, event coordinators, media trainers, and cheerleaders. So one thing that we should talk about first is uh, the difference between book publicity and book marketing. Book publicity and book marketing go hand in hand, but it's important to know the difference. I think it, the simplest way to explain it is that book marketing is everything you can buy and book, book publicity is everything you can't buy. So in other words, mar book marketing involves paid promotion, like advertising, merchandising, and social media promo, things you can control. Meanwhile, publicity is earned promotion. It involves media coverage, which can come in many different forms. Just showing a few different examples here, um, like TV interviews, podcast appearances, reviews in industry publications like Kirkus and Publishers Weekly, and even shout outs from influencers on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. Um, and right here, I just included a visual representation of the difference between book marketing and book publicity. For example, at the top, you're going to see a digital ad here on uh, this is a screenshot of Book Riot. Um, so this is something that the publishing house paid for to be uh, featured on the Book Riot website. It's a giveaway. Meanwhile, below, you can see an example of book publicity. This is a roundup of different books that are similar to the show, The Last of Us. So this is something the books featured in there are decided by the editor at Book Riot. You've pub the publicist couldn't pay for books to be featured. So that's just kind of a difference there um, between those two things. So what makes publicity so tricky is that media coverage is not guaranteed. It's up to the media to decide what, whether or not they'd like to cover your book. Good publicity can go a long way and can add offer credibility to your book, but it can be very difficult to land because there's so much competition and it's a constantly changing landscape. With all of this being said, you should think of publicity as a partnership between yourself, the author, and your publicist. We're going to walk through the different ways you can support your publicist throughout your campaign and help spread the words about your books. We're also going to touch briefly at the end on different strategies um, from how you can publicize your book after your book goes on sale. Okay, so um, first off, we're gonna talk a little about brainstorming. So this is something you wanna do before you meet with your publicist for the first time, which should happen roughly six to seven months before your book goes on sale. Um, but keep in mind, it's never too early to start brainstorming. This is something you can start to do um, as soon as you start writing your book. Um, so for your brainstorming session, I would I would suggest you reread your book with the publicity campaign in mind. As you read, try to think about these different things. Uh, the first thing you should think about is who is your target audience? Picture in your mind the person who might enjoy your book. Um, how old are they? Where do they live? What do they like to do? Figuring out your audience is the first step in creating your publicity plan. From there, you can strategize with your publicist on how to reach those readers and which publications best cater to those demographics. The next thing you should think about is genre. This might sound obvious, but it is really important and it's good to be specific here. Is your book a sci-fi book, mystery, romance? Think about where your book is gonna live in the bookstore. There are so many publications and re, uh, reviewers that specialize in specific genres. So knowing where your book falls is super important. For example, if you wrote a sci-fi book, places like Locus, Tor.com, and io9 might be a great fit. But if you wrote a, a romance book, they would not be interested. Those magazines would not be interested in it at all. Um, you might also want to think about regional ties. Where does your book take place? Where did you grow up and where do you live now? If you're targeting a regional publication, it's easier to get coverage if there's a connection there. For example, if the main character in your book is a diehard Eagles fan, perhaps an editor at the Philadelphia Inquirer or producer at WHYY might take a look. It, it helps to be creative here. Um, I included an example. So this is some publicity coverage I landed um, with or one of my wonderful authors, Jennifer Gavon, who wrote the book River Woman, River Demon. Um, so a columnist for San Diego Union Tribune um, 
wrote a feature on Jen talking about the book and her connections to San Diego. San Diego Union Tribune is very friendly to San Diego authors, so keep that in mind if you're based there, and just try to think about different regional connections you have for your campaign. Um, Another thing that you should think about are themes, anniversaries, and holidays. If your book is con uh, uh, connected to an upcoming anniversary or a trending topic in the news, this can really increase its, ch uh, increase its chances of getting covered. For example, would your book make a good graduation gift or would it fit in well with a Mother's Day roundup? All of this info is great to share with your publicist. Um, I also included an example on this one. So this is a holiday romance roundup on BuzzFeed Books. Um, so this is just an example of having a holiday tie-in can lead to more opportunities for coverage. Okay, um, you'll also wanna brainstorm a few successful books that are similar, similar to your own, either in terms of plot or theme. For example, going back to River Woman, River Demon with Jennifer Gabon, um, early on in her planning process, Jen compared her book to Girl on the Train and even referred, re referred to it as Chicana Girl on the Train. This was the perfect punchy line to help get people's attention. And I think it really helped with my pitch. Um, I also included an example on this one. So here's an example from an article uh, in Teen Vogue where they're comparing this new book, Belladonna, to Bridgerton and Jane Eyre. So if you're a Bridgerton or Jane Eyre fan, you'll be incentivized to pick up this book because it'll be it's similar to that. So it's good to figure out where your book fits in. Um, finally, you're going to want to ask yourself, is there anything else, is there anything especially unique about me or my book that my publicist should know? Was there something interesting or newsworthy about its creation? For example, maybe you went undercover researching animal traffic rings for your book, or you wrote your book while traveling with a circus. Tell your publicist about that and share photos and videos. It doesn't have to be as extreme as those examples, um, but you should definitely think about different reasons why you stand out from the crowd. Um, I will say both of those examples are real. Um, I did have an author write her book while she was traveling with a circus and an author that um, did undercover research on an animal trafficking ring. And for the animal traffic ring that we actually got coverage in psychology today where they covered that. So again, it's just a different way to get your book out there and get the media interested. All right. So you do your brainstorming and you meet with your publicist, to discuss your ideas and create a publicity plan. You'll then work together to execute that plan in the months leading up to publication. Um, your publicist will handle the bulk of the pitching, that's their job, um, and will alert you when different media opportunities come up. But they also might ask you to help you with pitching by reaching out to your own network. So this might involve connecting with, um, the first one, other authors. Who Think about who's in your literary community. This can be friends, people from your MFA program, or writing workshop partners. Getting other authors on board with the campaign can be invaluable. They can blurb your book, partner with you for a bookstore events, invite you to a panel, or share your book on their socials or in their newsletters. It's okay, don't be shy here. Authors are always reaching out to each other for support, so most people should be very understanding of your asks. Um, you're also gonna wanna tap into your hometown connections. Think about what kind of groups or clubs you're a part of. They don't necessarily have to be book related. For example, you can tap into your church or temple community or get in touch with a nearby uh, senior living center. For example, one of my authors, um, Anna Vesiana Suarez, she's doing a luncheon at a, for, to talk about her book with a senior living community in her neighborhood. Um, if you wrote a children's or YA book, you could get in touch with a local school and see if they'd be interested in having you come by for a visit. I have one author actually that's doing a career day to talk about her book at a nearby school. Um, I also, it's good to know if there's any good literary organizations in your area. For example, I live in Philadelphia and we have a great organization called Blue Stoop that sponsors literary events throughout the city. They're always open to hosting Philly writers and it's worth checking out if there's a group like Blue Stoop in your community. Um, another thing you should think about are what affinity groups you're a part of. There's so many great programs that shine a light on authors from specific communities, like the Jewish Book Council or Latinx in Publishing. Tapping, tapping into these networks can also be very helpful. Um, alumni associations are great too. Most universities want to show off all the amazing things their alumni are up to, so make sure you, they know you have a book coming out. 
reach out to the alumni department and see if they could spotlight you in an upcoming magazine or host you for an upcoming events, uh, an on-campus events. Um, so that's one idea. And then the last one I have here is, um, chances are, if you're a writer, you have probably know people in the media. Maybe you freelanced in the past or you wrote a guest blog post. Go back to these contacts and see if they're interested in covering your book. A warm ask like this is going to, will go a long way, potentially more than a cold pitch from your publicist. So those are a few things. One thing I like to do with my authors as a publicist is I create an author contacts grid and I ask them to fill in contacts of people in their network and we work together on who reaches out to two. It's just a great exercise to do if you have a book coming out. So um, you should also have a conversation with your publicist about unique things you can offer the media. Let's say you're halfway through a campaign and you're finding that landing traditional book reviews has been tricky. You'll want to think about other more creative ways to get coverage. Um, for example, one easy thing you could do is offer an exclusive excerpt. This is when a publication runs a section of your book in their magazine or on their website to give people a taste about what it's about. Try to identify a strong section in your book. Uh, it's great if it has a good cliffhanger um, that could work for an excerpt. Um, you also should see if there are any photos or videos you can offer the media. The more assets you have, the better, and these really can add color to your pitch. You can also check in with your publicist and see if there's a budget to make a book trailer. This usually falls under marketing, but publicists can help liaise this. Um, book trailers are also a great way to get extra eyes on your book. Um, do you have an exp any expertise on a niche topic? Um, your publicist could pitch you as a talking head for a new show or for a podcast, or maybe you could write a fun piece for a publication. For example, one book I'm working on now is Silent Came the Monster, which is about the real shark that inspired Jaws. So I'm pitching my author for pieces about how to defend yourself um, from shark attacks. So just try to think about kind of any interesting knowledge that you might know that could work for some sort of piece. Um, you could also offer to write roundups or original essays for publication. If you have an interesting idea that connects your book to something relevant in pop culture, like that example I showed before of the books for fans of The Last of Us, this could be a great pitch for places like Book Riot or Crime Reads or other places that are friendly to author-driven content. Um, I included an example here. So this is a roundup from Crime Reads. Um, the author was actually a former spy, and so she created a roundup of different espionage books. Um, and Crime Reads was interested and published it. So that's one fun thing you do. And also here, this is an example of, uh, so Priya Gunn, um, her book is a critique on app culture. So in this case, right, she's talking about her book, but she's also talking about a larger issue in pop culture, um, dating app culture. So again, try to find something you could talk about that speaks to larger issues rather than just about your book. And um, finally, I encourage you to think outside of the book review. Think about what makes you interesting as an uh, makes you interesting outside of being an author. Does your book tackle themes like mental illness or self-care? Maybe you'd be a great fit for a wellness podcast. Does your book take place on a thrilling journey going through the wilderness? Maybe Outside Magazine would want to talk to you. Casting a wide net is key to generating publicity for your book. There's just so many different ways you can try to get coverage. All right. So outside of media coverage, events are a great way to generate buzz for your book, especially within your own community. Early on in your campaign, you'll want to work with your publicist on an events plan. Together, the first thing you should do is figure out a budget. Book tours are really expensive, and most authors concentrate on regional outreach instead. Talk with your publicist on what makes the most sense for your book so you have realistic expectations going into your launch week. You're also going to want to figure out which bookstores you'd like to target. Uh, look to your neighborhood, look to your community. If there's a bookstore in your own backyard, it might be worthwhile introducing yourself to them and letting them know you have a book coming out. Making that in-person contact really can make a difference. Um, just be careful not to divide your audience. You'll wanna stick with one bookstore or one library event per area so as not to create competition between the events. Another thing that you'll wanna think about as events is um, finding a conversation partner. 
pairing up with another author or local media figure can really help generate more interest in the event and make the event itself more lively and interesting. If you, if you don't have someone in your own network, your publicist can help find a conversation partner for you, but it's good if it's someone you have already a connection with. Um, finally, the most important thing is encourage your family and friends to come. Getting people to come out to a book event can be really tricky, so it's important to make sure everyone in your life knows that you have a book coming up. This is supposed to be a fun celebration of all of your hard work, so invite everyone you know to come out to support. In terms of promotional ideas, I definitely recommend regularly posting about your event on social media, leading up to it, uh, plugging it in your newsletter, asking, again, anyone in your network to post about it on their newsletter in social media um, platforms. Um, and you could even do a postcard mailing. I'm actually working with the Boulder Bookstore right now on a postcard mailing for our daughter Galloway. Um, the store is sending out fun postcards with event details to a list of mailing addresses that the author provided. So that's just one creative way you can try to get the word out there. All right. So I'm going to wrap up my uh, presentation today by talking a little bit about what authors can do post-publication. After a book goes on sale, the active phase of the publicity campaigns concludes, which means that your publicist is no longer actively pitching your book. Instead, they'll be more reactive, pitching when things come up in the news or when backlist opportunities arise. However, there's still different ways we can publicize your book. Um, my first tip is to network, network, network. Connect with other authors, especially those who belong to the same publishing house. They may come, come to you for blurbs or to participate in events when their books come out, um, all of which can help get your name out there. For example, at Blackstone, we like to host uh, virtual Blackstone Book Talks, where authors interview each other about their books. This is um, just a fun example of different ways to that we shine a light on our backlist. Um, I also advise you introduce yourself to local booksellers and librarians. Make sure everyone in the community knows that you have a book going on sale, even after it goes on sale, um, and they'll most likely want to feature their book in, your, in their store or library. Um, also, you're going to want to reach out to your favorite bookstagrammers and book talkers. Feel free to reach out to them directly, and you can offer them complimentary copies of the book. Um, there's really no shame in self-promotion, and all of these strategies can help build grassroots interest in the long run. Um, my second tip is to keep an eye out for anything that comes up in the news that relates to your book. For example, I'm sure you all noticed over the past few years, pandemic books saw a surge in interest. Um, have your ear to the ground on trends and hot topics. If something bubbles up that relates to your book, get in touch with your publicist and see if another round of pitching is warranted. Um, my third tip is to try to attend book festivals and conferences. These are great, great networking opportunities and great ways to make yourself known in your local literary community. These places are usually generous in their support of local authors and could snowball into further um, into future speaking engagements. Finally, keep an eye out for any relevant awards you could submit your book to. Book awards are very selective, but always worth trying. Touch base with your publicist on an award submission plan and see if there are any awards you could submit yourself. State reading awards can especially help revitalize a backlist title and make for fun media moments. All right, so that's a brief overview of a few strategies you can employ for your own book publicity campaigns. And I'm happy to turn it over to any questions. Thank you so much, Isabella. Lots of good ideas there. Um, and we have um, quite a lot of questions as well. Um, but I, I noticed that a lot of people in the chat and in general were, were talking about how um, they don't have a publicist. And, uh, and I also know that a lot of like, especially the smaller publishing houses, they, they're not able to offer a publicist to um, their to their authors. And it seems to me that a lot of the things that you were talking about are what like people can be their own publicist and often are like expected to now by some, especially smaller presses. Do you have thoughts on that? Uh, different strategies that people can use to uh, publicize their books if they don't yeah. have a publicist. Yeah. Yeah, I do. So I think for, so for some things it can be tricky, tricky and they will need um, authors from traditional book houses. Um, like I think there are cer certain trade review publications where your publicist has to submit on your behalf mm -hmm. or awards, but a lot of places are open to getting pitches um, from you. So exam for example, you could pitch 
a roundup or an original essay to a publication um, that incorporates your book. That's one way you can get publicity. Um, there are certain reviews, I think forward reviews. I think Kirkus is now open to self-published authors. Yeah. You can submit to get your books covered. Um, I think that I think it helps to just have like a good punchy elevator pitch and to reach out to different editors that yeah. do books coverage and to see if you can generate some publicity on your own. And I know there are good um, outside PR firms that you can bring on and connect with to help get publicity mm -hmm. for your books if you don't have an in-house publicist. Yeah. So that leads me to the next question that I, I noticed a lot of people asked um, about how if they're going to hire their own publicist. Mm. How how do the, how do you tell if a publicist is any good? Do you have any thoughts uh, on that? Well, I'm not. A, that's that's a good question. I'm not um, an expert on outside yeah. publicity, unfortunately. Yeah. But I would definitely ask to see just different examples of campaigns they worked on. Maybe touch base on some of the authors that are in their roster um, and see if they had a good experiences with them. But unfortunately, yeah. I don't too much don't know too much about outside publicity firms. Do it? Do any of the the authors at Blackstone have their own publicists as well as work with you. Is that something that happens? Yep, that does happen a lot. So that happens sometimes when an author wants an extra boost for their PR campaign or a, yeah. PR, a publicist just working on their books. So I'll be working with an author and then they'll have an outside publicity firm. And then we all work together to make make that happen. I think what's prob what's, uh, what can be troublesome is that it's I think it's expensive often to bring yeah. on um, an outside publicist, but it's, something to consider. It has to be thought of as an investment, I suppose. And um, it, it, it's so competitive. The publishing industry is so competitive. Some authors really feel like they have to give themselves every advantage they can, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely talk with people who've used outside publicists in the past and see if they've had good experiences with them. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to refer you to someone that's good. Mm -hmm. Um, this is, this is a good question. Um, do you get a publicist by default once you get a publisher or, um, I know you've worked at like more than one large publishing house and in general, they, the large publishing houses offer publicists, but is, is that true? I always assumed that was true. I think it depends on the publishing house. I think it, yeah. it really does depend. At Blackstone, all of our um, all rights titles, so that means books that are coming out in hard, hardcover, audio, and ebook, they they all get a publicist. Mm -hmm. um, at my last job at Hachette, um, most books did receive a publicist, but we worked on a lot of gift books. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't do specific uh, publicity campaigns for certain gift books if it didn't make sense. Um, yeah. That have changed <laughs> since I've been there. Um, but I really do think it depends house by house. Um, what about like the, the genre or the category of the book, like memoir, nonfiction, gift books, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Like, is there different expectations or different processes for the different genres of books in terms of publicity? I think so. Um, that's a great question. I will say so. Usually in a publicity team, there are certain publicists that specialize in certain areas. So the publicity team will try to assign the publicist yeah. that has the biggest knowledge base to your book. Yeah. Um, and there are different expectations in terms of publicity. Gift books, I found to be pretty tricky to publicize for because um, we normally rely on sales. It's more of, uh, I'm thinking as the kind of books that you see at uh, near the cash register at Urban Outfitters. Those are a lot of the books I worked on. And that could be a little tricky to get coverage for because it's um, with traditional book reviewers. Meanwhile, there's so many sci-fi websites or mystery and thriller websites. So I feel like I have an easier time with those genres versus mm -hmm. certain nonfiction titles. Are there, are there any genres you've worked on more than others? Um, at Blackstone, I work on a lot of mystery and thrillers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something I have a lot of familiarity with. I've worked in a, a bunch of YA books, um, but it really runs the gambit. I've experienced yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. Um, so it seems like a lot of what you do is get in touch with like blogs and book websites and try to get a book listed. Is that right? That's true. But I also uh, reach out to podcasts, yeah. um, TV shows. TV is really hard, but yeah. I always try to get TV coverage for my books too. And book clubs. I didn't touch base on that, but book yeah. clubs are an excellent way to get publicity. So places like Reese's Book Club, Read with Jenna, Sarah Selects, um, yeah. Good Morning America. Those those are like amazing to get if you can get a pick with them. 
So when you reach out to one of these publications or podcasts or book clubs, how do you how do you how do you do that? How do you frame the pitch? Oh, that's a great question. So the first thing I do, backing up a little, yeah. is I create a press release explaining mm-hmm. what the book's about, why someone should be interested in covering it, some of the top selling points, um, and then I build a media list. Usually the lists I have now are anywhere between 150 to 300 media contacts and mm-hmm. I'll reach out with them explaining what makes the book hooky and interesting. Um, I'll have like a paragraph or two that explains why the book is special. This could be it's tackling an interesting topic or is, is from this prominent New York Times bestselling author, whatever the sales hook is, starting that at the top. And at the bottom, I'll include a NetGalley link Um, So people can take a look at the galley right away. And I'll also include like the official author bio and book description. So um, that's kind of what a basic uh, book pitch looks. And it depends. Um, Yeah. For for those who don't know, what is NetGalley? Oh, that's a good question. So (laughs) NetGalley is where we get early consumer reviews. We'll post um, the digital galley of a book. And consumers, educators, librarians, and booksellers um, Mm -hmm. can read it and submit early reviews. It's a great um, tool for us to just get more eyes on the books before we have physical galleys or before the book goes on sale. I'm I'm curious. I don't know if you would know this, but if self-published authors can put their books on NetGalley as well, or is that something set up more for established publications? I'm not sure. I think you could probably create your own NetGalley account. Um, I'm not too sure about that, but definitely worth looking into. Definitely. Um, you, earlier you had mentioned um, the media list, and I assume that's just the list of people you think are worth reaching out to. Yeah. And it seems to me that that's one of the advantages of working with a publicist is like you have spent time curating that list. Yeah. 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 I will say that is one of the big advantages because there are people that I've been emailing for years that are more familiar with my name and I, I have a sense of what their tastes are. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it is pretty easy to find information for big book editors at like a top daily newspaper. For example, it's probably easy to find the email address of the book editor for the New York Times. Yeah. But so many great freelancers that I work with that you kind of just collect over the years as a book publicist that are just really good to return to. And their information can be harder to find. Oh, freelancers, you mean like freelancers who regularly write for these various publications? Is I that- work- yeah, that's a great question. I work with a list of uh, freelance book reviewers okay. to all these different places. And so I, I love pitching them my books. Yeah. Okay. That's useful. And I, I think for our audience, like you can and probably should start like learning the publications and the editors in your genre mm-hmm. just for your own sake. Like you can do these things where you can like find out where you could potentially be like approaching editors and um people who could eventually like you don't have to have a publicist in order to build your own media list yeah i would say that i would say definitely like and don't just shoot for the top so even though it is really good to get on good morning america or again like the new york times bestseller list go deeper check out different bloggers that are covering your genre or smaller publications or newsletters mm-hmm. it's, it's good to have like a a a well of contacts and not just people at the very top that are really and I know from my own personal experience um for example in the past having lived in a small town like I met I I met the person just through writing events who liked to feature um local authors and just people of interest yeah uh, in in the local newspaper and you never know who you can find who could be of use just through um, networking and getting to know others in the community. Totally. I, I I often see that it's like, it snowballs, the things snowball. Like I've had authors, they'll do an event at a bookstore and then the mm-hmm. bookseller will love the event so much. She'll be like, Hey, come on my podcast. And then yeah. someone else will listen to the podcast and then want to review the book themselves. So opportunities lead to more opportunities. Yeah. that That's interesting. Um, We have this question from Andy about, he says, we hear a lot about comparing your book to others in the genre, Yeah. but what if your book doesn't easily fit into genre expectations or compare easily to other works? 
Yeah, that's tricky. Yeah, that's tricky. I think you could lean into the uniqueness of your book and mm -hmm. say, hey, this is different than what you've read. But the reason why I keep on mentioning comps is because I, I think people want to read what's well, something that they know they'll enjoy. Yeah. Um, so maybe if it's not a book that matches well with yours, maybe you compare it to a movie or a TV show, or maybe compare the mood, you know, like this mm -hmm. is the aesthetic of something else you might enjoy, or you go the total opposite angle and you lean into the uniqueness. This is special. This is different. No one has seen this before. Um, but I do, I do think it is helpful to have, try to find some sort of comp, if, even if it's not a book, maybe it's something else that's kind of a hybrid of the things you're working with. It's, it seems to me like the, the comparisons make your job as the publicist just a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think they're helpful to have, if you liked this, you'll also like this. Yeah. I'm, it's helpful. <laughs> that, I mean, that's literally often on the co cover of a book. It says for people who liked this book and that book, mm -hmm. and then it's just like a call out to the, the those people. Yeah. And, it's for an elevator pitch for sure. Yeah. Um, do you think how accurate do you think those comp titles need to be? Like it doesn't have to be like it's exactly the same book. No, I don't I don't think it often is. I think it just um captures the general mood or themes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a perfect comparison. Like the the book I showed before that was comparing it to Jane Eyre and um I forgot the other one, Bridgerton. Yeah. So those are two very different things, really. But I think they're just nodding to the the era or maybe the romance angle. So wherever you can make that connection and another thing you can do with comp titles is like see a book that you think was very successful and see who covered it what else what strategies did they do did they does the author attend a certain convention or come on a podcast try to track the other people's campaigns and see if you can mirror it in any way yeah that's a good idea you don't have to create everything from scratch yeah yeah see what worked for other people and do it yourself yeah. if you yeah. can and I suppose even if there isn't a comp title, um, there could be a comp author, like someone who is sort of seeking the same type of audience yeah. and then can borrow their strategies. That's true. Like find other authors that are really experimental and broke a lot of rules and see who um, see who covered them. Um, do you ever work um, with uh, publicity for poetry? Oh, no. Unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's um, it seems like the whole world of publishing poetry is very different. There's just not much money in it, to be yeah. honest, like except for the very select few. Yeah, I feel like in that case, you'd want a publicist that specifically works on poetry because, yeah, personally, I, I don't have much experience. Yeah. Um, so can can you talk a little more about your like role in the overall organization at Blackstone, like how you fit into the, the overall process of what happens in the publishing company? Oh, like how a publicist fits in with the rest of the yeah. uh, publishing process? Yeah, yeah of course. Um, so uh, I guess it, it depends house to house, but at Blackstone, so an acquisitions editor um, will, will acquire your book, work with you on the book deal, um, and usher you in to the publishing process. They'll also send you a marketing and publicity questionnaire, which mm -hmm. will ask you questions about yourself um, and your openness to interviews, um, to you know being on TV, doing events, and getting your social social uh, media handles and all that information. So that kind of happens at the beginning of the process. Mm -hmm. The editor will usher you in. Um, like I mentioned before, six to seven months out, you'll get in contact with your publicist and your marketer. And so your publicist is gonna help you with anything related to media coverage and events. They're also gonna be your primary contact for any big questions that you have. But then your marketer is going to be working with you on advertising opportunities, maybe conference appearances, uh, merchandising deals. So if you have any questions like that, your marketer would be the person. And then we also have another team that works solely on social media. So helps you like we do fun things like we do yeah. um, Spotify playlists to help you promote your, promote your book or cocktails inspired by your book. So your social media team would handle that. So I guess those are kind of the different silos of people that work on your book at once. And we're all working together to make sure that everything's uh, synergetic. 
Um, do do you feel do you feel like often um, the expectations of authors don't match what um, the marketing and publicity team is able to do, or do you think that tends to like fit together well? I think it depends. I think it depends. I think um, publicists try to be very transparent about what's happening with the campaign, but it's hard. Like I think, you know, like getting big TV or going on fresh air or yeah. hitting the New York Times bestseller list can be really, really difficult. Yeah. Um, and so I think coming in with like measured expectations of no publicity is guaranteed. We'll all try our best and try different strategies, but don't get too disappointed if you know, you're not on a big TV show or hitting the list from your, with especially with your first book, especially as your debut author, try to go in yeah. with measured expectations and think of it as like, I don't know, even though the campaign, the active campaign ends when the books goes on sale, a lot of books can have long tails and find success mm -hmm. later on. So it's never over. The campaign is never really over. Yeah. It's, it seems like there's a lot to dream about. <laughs> with any stage of the of the process of writing and publishing a book but like the reality is um you can aim for the highest level but you, it's not up to any individual what happens yeah it's it's really tricky <laughs> it's really tricky but always good it's always good to try for the top um but make sure you have things along the way too mm -hmm. Uh, we have a, a lot of questions. Do you have any any suggestions for memoir book publicity as um, opposed to other other genres? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say most places they do have like nonfiction at nonfiction editors um, mm -hmm. that are open to reviewing memoirs. I would say podcasts can be fun for memoir authors where you can talk with the host and share your life story and different fun in stories from your memoirs. Um, I'll try, try to think about different themes that are present in your memoir. For example, if it's you know, your memoir, memoir tackles a lot about loss, um, wellness podcasts or podcasts about uh, grieving and recovery, that could be a good fit. So just try to get creative about the themes within your book. Um, and again, you can rely on the regional connections and that can help break out a memoir. Um, but interview opportunities are usually good for that because the book is about you and your life. And so finding opportunities where you can share that is really helpful. Yeah, that makes sense because it, a memoir is personal in nature, right? So yeah. um, we have a question from Barb. Um, Isabella, what is the most rewarding aspect of your job? Oh, well, I will say publicity has like, that you really do feel like such a wonderful, like burst of satisfaction when you see a story run. Um, and it's so wonderful. I love sharing news with authors of like, hey, this place wants to interview you or, hey, this podcast just ran. It's so, I feel such high satisfaction from that. There's a really, um, it's a very clear like effort and reward with publicity. Sometimes you don't always see the reward. You can push and push and not get the coverage you want. But when you do, it's really, really satisfying. It seems like it's similar in a way to a lot of authors experience trying to find a publisher. Yeah. They keep putting together their pitch and sending it out to the publishers. But yeah, as, as most people know, there, it's mostly rejections or not even replies. Yeah. But eventually you get the thing that you aim for if you keep at it. Yeah. And when you do, it's, it's an even bigger thrill because there was a, hard, a long road to get there. Um, do, do publishing houses ever um, like have a budget set aside for paying for things like traveling to conferences or going on book tours? Yeah, I think so. I, yes. So for certain worthwhile opportunities, again, a, a different for each house. So definitely check in with your own team about this. Mm -hmm. but, um, I know at least at Blackstone, we do sponsor um, so, like select conference travel, any worthwhile opportunities that we think really would make a difference. We do cover author travel and meals and things like that. Uh, you, you'd mentioned podcasts and like getting on book lists, but in your experience, what which of these types of things tend to just be really effective in selling books? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Like which kind of publicity makes the most impact? Yeah. I mean, it's so it varies so much. I would say with TV shows, we can see a big spike when the interview runs, but sometimes like having instead like a podcast or hitting multiple places mm -hmm. at once can make more of a difference. 
it's hard because we can't always see where the spikes are exactly correlated to. Yeah. I remember I was talking to one publicist and they were reviewing sales for that week and they saw this big spike for like a backlist title. And then they found that it came from like a post on Reddit that led to a new, renewed interest in the book. So it really can be varied, but I say like influencer outreach um, and a widespread, like a widespread campaign can really make a difference. Um, that's interesting, especially especially to th think about like the data that you have on your end like can you can you talk a little bit about like how you look at book sales and try to connect it back to what you actually do to make those happen sometimes you can see so we can see like book scan numbers and things so mm -hmm. sometimes you can see like let's say you know an author is going to be on tv uh, this date at this time you can see if there was an increase in book sales after that an interview ran yeah but it can be a little tricky if it's like, mm -hmm. let's say we're looking at the whole week and there's all these different interviews and things running at the same time. Yeah. It's hard to correlate. You don't know which. Point. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's better if it's like a singular event that's happening and then you can mm -hmm. see what the changes were. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. We have a lot of questions. Um, so... Are there are there situations where you would ask the author to reach out, for example, with people um, that they know on their own personal terms versus where you would reach out? Um, I think if someone, let's say, was a freelancer and worked closely with an editor in the past, mm -hmm. I feel like I like when um, authors reach out. Often what I'll do is I'll reach out myself to their contact list if I'm having trouble um, hearing back, I'll ask the author, like, hey, could you reach out to your contact there and see yeah. if it's the needle? Um, oh, can do you have thoughts on um, like influencers on social media, for example, like Book Talk or Bookstagram or Booktube? Yeah, I like reaching out to them. I, I should have included that in my presentation, but yeah. I like to include uh, um, uh, influencer mailing where I have a list of people that I go to for on Instagram, TikTok, um, YouTube, and I'll send them a pitch describing the book and seeing if they want a copy. And then I'll send out the book. And then hopefully that leads to them talking about it on their platforms. And that's, I think, uh, another fun way to get uh, um, kind of get a groundswell of interest as the book goes on sale. Uh, and I have a couple questions related to this. One is, um, do you, you just reach out through the platforms, like usually using a direct messaging feature? Is that? Well, on Instagram and TikTok, often they'll include their email addresses, like in yeah. their bios, or they'll have like a link tree that has their email address. Um, I don't usually DM them because I don't want to use like my personal account. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, usually they feature like, their email address on their website or on their socials how can you tell if they're worth reaching out to you do you look at like the number of views or their subscriber count yeah i always i look at their follower count i look at how active they are if they're regularly posting about books and i'll also see what the interactions are Are people commenting on their posts are you know uh, i'll try to see if what kind of community they have by looking at their socials and then you would send them the same sort of pitch that you talked about before with just the reasons why the book is worth talking about and a link to the net galley. Yeah, I'll usually I usually have a little bit more fun, punchy language for influencers, a um, little less, I, I guess, a little less uh, uh, professional than what I do. Not professional, that's not the right but, word. No, but casual, more casual, more casual. Um, and then I'll send them a complimentary copy of the book um, to share. Yeah. How do you how do you find um, the right influencers? That's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky. Um, uh, there's a lot of people I've been working with for a long time, um, using like tracking different hashtags and seeing who was the most active. Like if you do like hashtag, um, I hashtag like book talk and seeing who's most active and doing it that way. But it is like kind of a long, arduous process to build your own list of influencers. I think it's also something authors can do as well, like making connections there and um, sharing their books with them. I get a lot of authors who say, hey, I want this person to get a copy. And we work together on making that happen. It seems like a lot of um, 
the success of a publicity campaign, but also the success of what goes into being a successful author has to do with um, gaining an understanding of the industry in terms of the opportunities out there, the various publications, the influencers on social media, yeah. and also like getting to know other authors. Like you have to just sort, sort of learn what's going on and look around yeah. and get like a, a pretty developed sense of how the system works as a whole. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like a lot of research. Uh, if you could tell from my presentation, it's a lot of just trying to research different opportunities. And if you see this avenue is not working, pivot and try this avenue instead. Um, so yeah, very research heavy. And that's why I had such a big emphasis on connecting with other authors who've already been through this process because they can yeah. really help you out and connect you with the right people. It, so many authors, it seems to me, are very um, generous with their time and their understanding of wanting to make it easier for other authors um, who they know have have the daunting task of getting their books out there. I think so, especially if you're a debut author. It could be worth reaching out to one of your favorite authors and saying, hey, mm -hmm. I have a book coming out. I really admire your work. Would you be open to doing a blurb for me? A lot of people can be, if their time allows, can be really friendly and supportive. Um, can you, that, that's a, um, a good thing to talk about is reaching out to get blurbs. Can you talk a little bit about um, what you advise authors to do in terms of getting blurbs? Yeah, I would say, so that's something, it depends, it changes from house to house. At Blackstone, the publicist is really helping with blurb outreach, um, but a lot of cases it's the editor. And in that case, um, you'll work with them to create a list of different authors that feel like a good fit for your book. Like they write similar, they write in the same genre or tackle similar themes, and then you'll divide the outreach. Um, and usually that involves reaching out to the author's agents um, with a short note um, explaining the ask that you want them to write a blurb and why they'd be a good fit. And it really does make a difference if the authors have like a personal, um, you know, personalized note to the author saying, hey, you in particular, I love your writing. This is why I think you'd like it. I think that really helps with blurb outreach. And then the blurbs will later be featured on either on the book jacket cover or in social media assets or different things that we use to promote it. Mm -hmm. It seems like the right blurb can give a lot of credibility to a book in general. It can help. It can help if some if uh, a well-known author is vouching for you. That really can make a difference. It helps with my pitching. I always include good blurbs in my pitching. Um, so yeah, I feel like it really it can make a big it can make a big difference. But it also you know it's not the biggest thing in the world either. Yeah. How do you think um, authors should prioritize their efforts if they have they have limited um, time, mm -hmm. and most authors just want to spend time writing? Yeah. <laughs> so, like if there was just one or two things that they should focus their attention on, what would you say that should be? I think they should try to make like, I think, hmm, that's a good question. Like in terms of the whole publicity campaign. Yeah. Hmm. I would create like a short list of maybe top five publications that you would love to see your work featured in. Maybe especially places that are friendly to author driven content and try reaching out to those top five and seeing the responses you get and make sure that those places match the target demographics that you're going for. Um, for example, if you're writing a YA book, maybe AARP is not the right fit. Not, yeah. not that. So, yeah. so try to find something that's very tailored to you, mm -hmm. uh, something that you can offer them and go after that. Um, I hope that advice isn't too vague. <laughs> but no, that would... that's, that's fine. Um, so we have, we have a question about, um, Kirkus Review. Can can you talk a little? And I, I know there's other services like that. Can you talk a little bit about the role of um, getting a review in Kirkus Review and similar places? Trade publications. Yeah. yeah. So once um your the dig, the digital galley of your book is ready, whatever final version of the um, interior pages, your publicist will submit it to um this uh, different trade publications. So that's Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, Library Journal. Um, I'm sure I'm shelf awareness. I also submit to, mm -hmm. and, um, after a few, uh, sorry, <laughs> a few months before publication, those reviews should start coming in. And that's a great way to gauge the temperature around your book. Are you getting a positive reception? Um, are 
people taking issues with certain things in your book. Um, if there's great pull quotes, we can use that for promotional materials. Mm -hmm. I'll include it in my pitching. The social media team will include it in their assets. Uh, it's just, I consider it like kind of a temperature gauge and a good way to get your book out there um, to industry professionals. So li li librarians, booksellers, et cetera. Okay. Um, and do do librarians and booksellers really use these trade publications to find their the books they carry? I feel like it helps guide different, uh, they do, I know places like Library Journal, they'll do Spring's most anticipated books in this genre. And I feel like mm -hmm. that does help industry interest. Um, I feel like a bookseller or librarian can maybe speak more to like how they use these yeah. trade publications, but this is how we do get early interest in the, in the industry. So it seems, so there's like special lists within the publications as opposed to just the reviews. And it would be like ideal to be on like the anticipated book lists. Yeah, they'll do like seasonal previews mm -hmm. um, of different genres. Do you have any control over whether you, you get like special featured in, in these publications? Uh, I You don't get, I don't think that it's up to the editor to decide which books that they choose to feature, yeah. but your publicist should be pitching your books for these um, uh, for these opportunities. I know Publishers Weekly, they do call for info. Well, they'll do special highlights on different kinds of books. Like they might do a memoir call for info. So your publisher should be su submitting all of the memoirs that they're working on. Um, yeah. but, but then ultimately they might only feature like one or two. Yeah. Yeah. It's another opportunity that you hope for. Yeah. Nothing guaranteed. Very yeah. few things guaranteed. Um, how do you think about um, an author's own platform in terms of their own social media following their own website their own ability to sell books just through their own relationships i think it's really important i think it's important to have a good author's website you should feature your um feature your author bio but of course your publicist information mm -hmm. um so people that stumble upon your website know who to reach out to if they're interested in um approaching you about publicity opportunities I think you should feature your book trailer up there, all of the buy information for your books. Make sure that you're retailer agnostic. You don't want to just include, you don't want to just include a link from one retailer. You want to include everything. Um, and also, I think it's good to have strong socials where you can interact with readers, fans, connect with other uh, authors, help your pub publishing company with all the promotion that they're doing. Yeah. So having strong socials is, is important. Have you worked with authors who have had like really large social followings? I have. I'm actually working. I have, have one <laughs> coming up. I'm working on a book with uh, Debbie Brin, who is a TikToker. And she has a big following. So I'm excited to see the different fun so TikTok promotions we could do to yeah. get word of her book out there. And it, it seems like it seems like it's really hard to turn that into a like successfully selling books. But it, do you think that's true? Like, does it really make a big difference if you have your own large following? I think it can really help. I think it can yeah. definitely help generate pre-orders. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a strong following of people that ride or die for you, I do think it makes a difference. Yeah. Um, and and you mentioned pre-orders. That's another um, interesting topic. Um, is that something that's really important? Or like, do you want to have a bunch of pre-orders in terms of the, like getting the uh, on the bestseller list? Or is it not necessarily that big of a deal? I think pre-orders are, are really important um, and there's different fun things you can offer as pre-order initiatives. Um, we do, sometimes you could offer like a deleted scene from your book or a fun oh, giveaway yeah. and they're just different strategies you can do. I think mm -hmm. marketing team usually handles pre-order initiatives, at least at Blackstone, but I think it does make a difference. Um, and you want to see pre-orders, not just from Amazon, but with other places too. Yeah. So we're just about out of time, um, but I, I really want to thank you um, for sharing so much of your knowledge today. Um, is there any other final words of advice that you have for our audience? Oh, I don't know if I have any final words and advice except to um, cast a wide net, get creative where you can, and work closely with your publicist on a strong plan. But I hope I hope what I shared today was helpful, and thank you, thank you so much for having me, Jacob. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I feel like personally, I've learned a lot. I I, did, I don't know that much about publicity, but I feel like I've, I know more now and a lot of useful information. So thank you. Okay. Um, 
I want to thank everybody who was here today for your time and um, your support. Um, I want to thank all of the people behind the scenes at Authors Publish, um, Caitlin Jans, our editor, S. Calicar, everybody on the team who makes this possible. I'm very grateful to have my role in, in Authors Publish. Um, and if anyone has any questions for me, you can always email support at authorspublish.com. Thank you again, everybody. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you, Isabella. Thanks, Jacob. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.